Hey YouTube, I'm coming at you with my 2005 Subaru Legacy. Uh, the reason for this video is uh, around probably about 4,000 to 4,500 RPMs my car kind of cuts out. I was thinking that it was uh, like a boost leak or something like that. So I've, I've taken some starter fluid and kind of sprayed all around uh, why the engine's been running, just kind of listening for the RPMs to kind of wrap up a little bit uh, and nothing couldn't couldn't hear anything couldn't see nothing I even checked pull up pulled off a uh, vacuum hose and seen if that worked and it did uh, just couldn't find nothing and so I did a little more research talk with my brother-in-law and uh, I'm gonna pull off my coil packs and I'm gonna replace the gasket or the not the gasket but the coil over plug insulators on my uh, uh, coil packs and uh, it actually makes a lot of sense because it's just really happens in the higher rpms and uh, my car has 232,000 miles on it and so I'm really keeping this sucker going but everything else like the engine only has about a hundred thousand miles on it but the whole top end has over two hundred and thirty two thousand miles so that means that these coil packs have uh, over two hundred and thirty two thousand miles running I, there's probably more hours in idling and uh, so these things get hot they're gonna break down and it's pretty inexpensive repair these were eleven dollars a piece and uh, got them at O'Reilly's and uh, so yeah I'm gonna start with that I'm gonna jump in there I'm probably just gonna shoot a video of taking one to two out uh, depending on how it goes uh, okay so here we are I'm over on the driver's side it would be easier to remove the battery uh, but for sake of time I didn't want to so your coil packs just down in there so I kind of went went ahead there 12 millimeter 12 millimeter uh, bolts. So I've already gotten the two back out or the the this side off. Uh, but the one problem is the back one. You I need to raise the engine to uh, pull it out. It is getting stuck against the housing the frame. Probably finagle it get it out if I really tried but I'm gonna have to raise the engine to do the passenger side anyways so and got to pull more stuff off I'm gonna pull all this stuff out of the way uh, to give me a little more space but just wanted to show I did get this side out the front one and the driver's side and so here's that boot it actually doesn't look too terribly bad, but I will disconnect this, get it off, and uh, let's see if I can do it. Did it with one hand. Sweet. So here it is. Let's just. So here it is off. Looking at it, it actually doesn't look really too horribly bad. But, anyways, so looking at it, it feels still pretty solid. So hopefully there's maybe one or two in here that are bad. But this one doesn't seem too bad. But I'm going to replace it anyways. Uh, I have the new one right here. So I'm going to replace it anyways, put it in. And uh, hopefully this fixes that problem that I was having. But, anyways... So that's pretty much how you do, how you replace those. It's not too terribly hard. You got two bolts underneath. I'll see if I can get under there. I don't have any ramps or anything. But you got a bolt. See that little plate right there? So that little plate, there's a bolt here and there's a bolt there on the other side and you literally can just lift that up okay I'm under my car and 
pulled the the nut out. You got the one over there. There's another one. It's behind the behind the jack somewhere. Anyways, uh, pulled it out. Now I'm lifting one side up. As you can see on the that little spot I showed you earlier. I mean, there's a gap lifting the engine away from the subframe and hopefully giving me enough to pull that out. So let's give that a whirl. And it, it gave me just enough to pull it out. So there it is. So I will replace that and I'll start on the other side. All right, you guys, I got it pulled out, the air filter. It's just right up here. And pulled it out, could access those a little bit easier. Just kind of fish your hands through there. I've already loosened them. Uh, I have it braced underneath. So to help pull the engine up and so now I'm gonna go back through and take these ones out and then tighten them back down. I already got this, the left side already done. And uh, so I'm gonna uh, <clears throat> get these ones pulled out, put the new pieces on and uh, we'll come back and we'll look at them and uh, all four and see what we think. And uh, hopefully this fixes it, if not. All right, got that side put together as well. I'm gonna get the air filter back on. Uh, one quick thing I just wanted to mention, if you do pull these all the way out and you happen to forget uh, which lead goes in the front and which lead goes in the back, the white lead, uh, the white, oh, here, let me climb underneath. You can see it a little bit better, but. So you got a white, lead and a black lead so if you look on the coil pack where it connects the front is white and the rear one is black and uh so anyways i got that nut and washer in over on that side i'm gonna put this uh washer and nut on this side and put my air filter back on and uh all right here we go so this is the right hand front I mean we're having over 200,000 miles 230,000 miles they don't look too bad they are a little solid in the middle it's kind of solid in the middle the new ones were soft all the way around so they are kind of feel like they are this is the right hand rear. This is the left hand rear. But so for the most part, they don't look too terribly bad. But it's probably a good thing to change them with that many miles on it. Uh, just to change them and to just make sure that they are getting a good contact and not jumping, not arcing inside the housing uh, but got this installed got my mass airflow sensor hooked back up and tighten this down and so I am gonna go drive it and hope that works and I'll probably do a video just after driving uh, getting the rpms up that and kind of wrapping it out a little bit and seeing if that fixes the problem. As I said at the beginning of the video that I sprayed all the areas just trying to check. This is Jerry Rig this way. A friend of mine, we were trying to see if my turbo was bad and to kind of bypass. I just haven't taken time to put it back. But anyways, so that's what that is. Uh, but anyways, I sprayed everything with starter fluid trying to see if there was a boost leak or a vacuum leak somewhere uh, I did remove it from here and sprayed starter fluid down in there and it actually it revved the engine and everything so I know that that little method is just a four dollar method to try it because I don't have a smoke machine uh, but anyways I all right you guys so I just got back from uh, 
the drive and it worked uh, got up to probably about 5,000 rpms and uh, nothing it didn't sputter it didn't skip like it would uh, felt actually really strong really good so it's a success uh, super excited about that so anyways uh, if you like this video please thumbs it up and uh, leave a comment if you have any questions I try my best to uh, answer as many as I can uh, and please continue to read the comments it may answer your questions instead of uh, texting me or uh, message me uh, directly so anyways I uh, hope this video helped you uh, and I'll be back with more thanks